Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel, and as I promised, now I bring you the, the video review of this week's and last week's chapter of the Seven Deadly Sins, 173 Darkness Descends and 174 Meliodas versus the Ten Commandments. Actually, versus the Nine Commandments, because, because um, the other guy... Gollum is already dead, so or at least he's turned to stone, so he, yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter now. And what do I want to say of these past two chapters is... I am a little bit disappointed. That's it, video's ended. No, just kidding. Uh, but yes, I, I already spoke about this in the in the 172 video review in which i thought yes the chapter was awesome the chapter was mind-blowing seeing meliodas holding his ground against two of the commandments is a sight for salty eyes but i did not i believe we did not need another chapter with that and that's what 173 was. Just a northern slaughter between Meliodas and Gloxini and Dolor. It was once again Meliodas kicking ass against them. And them managing to do bugger all. So 173 was to me a very unnecessary chapter. A waste of a chapter I would say. What happened at the end of 173, the arrival of the remaining commandments, could have easily been done in 172, and 174 could have easily have been chapter 173, and 174 would have been anything else, would have been, a, would have been something else. Because nothing really happened in 173, it was just, as I said, Meliodas kicking ass versus Gloxini and Dover. Was it good to, to watch? Of course it was. It's always nice to see the main character of a manga or an anime kicking ass against the main bad guys, which in this case are demons, the commandments. But we had that in the chapter before. And then he did all that just to have the other guys once again saying, oh my god, Meliodas is a beast. He's holding his ground against two of the commandments. And then in the end, the remaining seven commandments descend. Yes, I'm not going to lie. In the end of chapter 173, I was like, oh my god, the remaining commandments arrived. Meliodas is dead. I was excited. And then 174 came. And it was not as big as a disappointment as it was 173. But, once again, it didn't move the action at all. It was... Actually, it didn't move at all. It was just, once again, Meliodas, this time having way more difficulty. Of course, he's against Nine Commandments. But, it didn't move in terms of story. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not that the action is bad. It's not that these chapters are unnecessary by any means. But the action didn't move. Um, at the beginning of the chapter, now speaking of 174, I'm not even going to say anything else about 173. For me, that chapter is all about done. So, yes, I'm sorry for that, but this time it's really not worth it. In the beginning, the, actually the first page of 174 presents to us, not officially, but it gives us the names of all the Nine Commandments that have arrived. We, I was at least surprised to see that Marilisa survived. But if she hadn't survived, Elaine wouldn't be alive and she wouldn't have fought besides Elizabeth. We have Meliodas' brother. I don't know if I, if I could say older brother or younger brother. He looks older than, than Meliodas. He's actually the guy that gives face to Meliodas' poster, Esther Rosa. We have Glaucinia, the one who's already 
who was already fighting with uh, with Meliodas. We have Rodrin in the body of Dreyfus. We have Zaldoris, the second brother of Meliodas. We have Monspier, Dolor, Derriere, which is French for, well, you know, it's it's French for us, really. And we have Greylord, the one who saved Fordrin from the the Azuri guys a few chapters back. And again, this chapter was another slaughter, but this time not on Meliodas' part, but on the commandment's part. They managed to pin Meliodas down in place. Yes, he was able to still fight against them, but when he tried to run, he wasn't able to do so. One of the commandments actually managed to, to to pin him down in place. If he tries to escape, he's teleported back to that place. And the fight begins in a very interesting manner because Meliodas swings at Zeldoris, but Zeldoris rips his arm off. I don't know if he did it with his sword. He looks like he's shitting his sword back. He's holding Meliodas' arm. And he has his other hand on the sword. So it could mean that he sort of quick draw the sword and caught Meliodas arm and then sheeted the sword back in. Meliodas tries to reconstruct his, his arm but it's unable to do so and thing they use one single two pages nearly for this scene. Which is where I think that it fails a little bit. This could have been done faster. And it's, it keeps on going for the next for the next uh, few pages. In the next page we actually see Meliodas being chained down. And those are the chains that keep him from running away. Well, he can run away. But if he goes away a certain distance, he's teleported back. Meliodas keeps trying to fight, he's, he's able to reconstruct his arm. He actually tries to go and escape, and this is this is where we see the chains of eternity, the cursed chains of, not eternity, the cursed chains of enmity actually doing their job. And then Meliodas keeps taking a beat from... From the commandments, we actually find out a little bit more about Derriere's powers, which apparently adds more power to each strike she she deals. She deals one strike, it adds, I believe, how many pounds it is. The guy actually explains, but the power of the attacks increase with each successive combo attack. So she she strikes. It's a normal power. She strikes again, for my understanding, it's the same power. But if she strikes a third time, the power raises. And then if she strikes a fourth time, a fifth time, a sixth time, and so on. So the first two strikes actually have the same power. But following the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, the, the power raises. And it adds a hundred tons of power for each consecutive combo attack. So that's a lot. If we count a uh, hundred tons and the fact that she already dealt 53 strikes to Meliodas, if we go by my math, she dealt 51 extra combo strikes. Uh, so she gave two strikes, which don't count, at least, but apparently they do count. But let's imagine she had two strikes which didn't count, and then she had 51 more strikes that counted. If you multiply 51 by 100, then it's a lot. 5,000 and 100, something like that. I'm, yes, I'm good at math, as you can see. Probably something like that. And she goes, and she goes on, 54... We don't see 55, but if she would continue, she would go to 55. We even see one of Go one of Monspiet's attack, imprisoned Firebird, which 
It just appears to burn Meliodas with some black flames. But he was able to cut Montspiet, not severely, because he he gets up the instant after. Meliodas strikes his neck. It's, it's a freaking cool scene. Montspiet like raises and is like, oh, good strike. And then all of a sudden the, his neck like slips nearly in half. But he just puts it on back together. And the chapter ends like that, in a very troublesome situation for Meliodas. Meliodas has his arms completely rendered useless and wields his sword in his mouth. And so the chapter ends. Now, allow me once again to press the wound. I am severely concerned as for what chapter 175 will bring. We have the name of the chapter to my beloved Meliodas, so I believe that it will have something to do with Elizabeth. Now, we know that Elizabeth, when they were training a few chapters ago, when they went to the Druids and Meliodas got his powers back, we found out that Elizabeth actually didn't accomplish anything in her training, or at least so were we told. I believe that she might have some trump card hidden, and I believe that's what she will use in the next chapter, as so the chapter is named to my beloved Meliodas, because she's the one that loves Meliodas, so it would make sense. Now, the thing that concerns me the most is that chapter 175 will once again be a chapter like these two past chapters. A chapter where Meliodas stands, stands before his enemies and says, I'm going to kick your ass, and he kicks their ass. It was already way too overpowered for me to have Meliodas deal with two commandments himself, but I was able to forgive that because, well, you know what? It's Meliodas, he's the main character, so it makes perfect sense. He's a demon, he was friends with them once, so it's totally fine. And this chapter as well, it, it was totally fine for him to be losing because he's technically losing. Well, he isn't winning, so against the, against the remaining commandments. So... My fear is that the writer will he's probably have a plan, and I'm talking gibberish right now, but I hope he stops with this fight soon, so that the Seven Deadly Sins and all the other guys who were fighting in the tournament can go away and stop for a while and think. We have nine commandments to face against. Who's going to fight with who? And how are we going to fight against them? Because Camelot has fallen. Um, Britannia will fall if it comes to that. So all the world of the Seven Deadly Sins will fall if nothing is done quick. And something needs to be done quick. So my hopes for the next chapter are this. I hope Elizabeth plays a part in it because the name of the chapter implies so. Maybe she's able to recover Meliodas' wounds, and maybe she, or maybe she's able to break the, um, the cursed chains of enmity and allow him to be teleported near them. But even then, the commandments would be able to track him down and then end them all in one fell swoop. Maybe she will be able to push the commandments back to another place. I don't know if she'll be able to temporarily seal them so to give them time to recover. I don't think that's going to happen. It could, because she's a druid and the druids played a huge part on sealing the commandments before or the demon race in and on itself. So, I believe it's a possibility, but it's a very slim possibility. So, anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this Essel return to, to the videos. I'm sorry if you're not very agree if you don't if you don't agree a lot with my opinion, but that's why I made the channel for so that you guys can kick my opinion in the nuts and tell me your opinions so we can debate on both opinions and come to a conclusion, maybe create a theory together, who knows? But that's why I created the channel, not to have you guys agree with me all the time. 
but to also have you guys share your opinions with me. I've said enough for this video and for the fairy tale video. Tuesday I'm gonna be back with the One Piece video and I hope to get this on the right track. I will start preparing some new videos to vary the content a little bit, some presentation some presentation sort of videos to present some mangas I read to you guys so you guys can find out about more mangas and who knows maybe I'll start reviewing these those said mangas in the channel but anyway I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I'll see you Tuesday with the one piece videos of chapters 825 and 826 which I believe it will be very, very good because Germa 66 has appeared. But I'll leave that to the One Piece videos and I will see you there.